Welcome to Keeping In Sync with Microsoft 365 for this week, the 8th of May. Getting very close to my birthday, I hope you've got me a good present. Starting as always with a reminder that dates may change and that certain settings may be turned off by default or turned on by default, which may mean uh, why you might not see them, or there may be a licensing restriction. So um, yeah, and points if you can recognize this particular reference. Now, just a reminder that uh, Stream, the classic Stream portal is being retired. Um, so as of the 15th of May, you won't be able to upload any files into it. And as of February 15th, uh, 2024, the portal will be shut down and actually any content will be deleted. Uh, so if you've got any content in there, work with your IT team or us, Rapid Circle, to help get it out. Now, first it went from office.com to microsoft365.com, uh, but now Microsoft has its own top level domain name, which is effectively the equivalent of .com, uh, .org, those kind of things. Uh, so now they have a .microsoft, and starting from May, you will start to see a cloud.microsoft for various Microsoft 365 apps and services. Um, so this is going to be a little bit confusing as you'd expecting you'd be expecting it to be something blah 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 dot com but no it's going to be as you can see there things like sway.cloud.microsoft uh, so it's going to take a little bit of getting used to now unfortunately no screenshot here but uh, users that have uh, guest access to your uh, Microsoft Teams environment can no longer join Teams live events as an attendee if they're using a web browser uh, instead, they'll need to use the desktop or mobile clients in order to be able to join those live events. This doesn't affect external people joining as a viewer, um, only uh, guests uh, attending it um, themselves. Uh, this is rolling out mid to late May, so if they can't use it, tell them to use the desktop client. Now, currently in public webinars, you can't distinguish registered users um, in the lobby from, I guess, commoners who didn't register for the webinar. Uh, which means that you can't allow registered users to bypass your lobby and enter your webinar um, directly. So now with this new change, there's going to be two new lobby options that will allow you to better control the security of your webinar. Those two new lobby options, as you can see there, are um, allow registered users to bypass the lobby. That, as it sounds like, will allow them to bypass the lobby and also reject users who can't bypass the lobby. Um, so they'll basically just get turned away. Uh, this is rolling out mid-May to early June. Now, a big change coming to channel conversations in Microsoft Teams, namely the Compose box will move uh, to the top from the bottom where it's been since day one. And also newer messages and active threads are at the top with scrolling for all older items, uh, meaning you need to scroll down to see them um, instead of scrolling up as you've been doing to date. Um, additionally, uh, conversations can actually be popped out into their own window, posts can be pinned, and also the channel information um, shows pinned posts and other contextual information. Now, it is important to note that chats remain unchanged, meaning that you'll be swapping from top down when you go to a channel uh, versus bottom up as you go into a chat. So it's a little bit frustrating, but the channel um, side of things does make sense because if you think about it, when you're using Microsoft Teams, you're usually looking at the top part of the screen or the top part of the app when you're looking at the nav options and then you're looking at the channel listing and then you click, you your eyes move across to the right. So it makes sense that you move across to the right and instead of going down and then back up again. Um, but it is annoying that chats remain unchanged. So yeah, you'll be switching. Uh, this is rolling out early to mid-June and there are no options. It's just going to happen. Now, the together mode um, gets some improvements, namely the uh, you'll now have label attachments attached to um, people's videos. Also, the name labels will support status icons that indicate microphone, active speaker, um, spotlight, or um, pin, uh, the ability to pin within the meeting. Uh, additionally, your own video um, in the gallery will be removed while together mode is active to avoid duplication of that self preview. Um, now, lastly, together mode will also display raised hands and reactions within the view. Uh, this is rolling out early May to mid June. Um, breakout rooms, a feature in Microsoft Teams, um, brings a new shuffle capability, which allows you to randomly assign participants to rooms 
um, as after rooms are created, um, as well as being able to randomly reassign them prior to the meeting or during the live meeting itself. Uh, now the shuffling can be applied to all participants or only to unassigned participants, uh, redistributing them evenly to existing rooms, taking a lot of the uh, headache and effort that you've got had to go to to assign people to different breakout rooms. This is rolling out mid-May to mid-June. Now, if you've used Microsoft To Do, then users in your organization can actually be members of lists that are shared with them from a consumer account, um, such as your Hotmail or Outlook.com, uh, which is the ability for, let's say, your partner to share a list with you and you can access it from your work account. Uh, now, unfortunately, that feature hasn't been with us for long and is also being removed. Uh, from May 30, you won't be able to join and contribute to any external lists. Uh, from June 30, um, you will be removed from any external lists that um, you've had access to. And if this feature is complete news to you, then you're probably the reason why it's been taken away as it's most likely due to lack of use. Uh, and if you don't know what to do is, then we have other things to talk about. Now in Viva Connections um, on mobile, you'll be able to personalize the mobile dashboard uh, with information that is most relevant to you based on uh, reordering and hiding cards like you would with editing a SharePoint page. So this is great that it's personal now. Um, this is rolling out early May to early June. Also on mobile, but now for Viva, uh, the inbox and notification shortcuts will now be in the top right. Um, they're moving away from the bottom navigation bar, whereas all other shortcuts will remain in the bottom navigation bar. So lots of top down, bottom up switching going on. So, you know, lots of good eye workouts going on. Uh, this is rolling out early May to late June, but on mobile app. And that's it for keeping in sync with Microsoft 365 this week.